history. What's up, fellow journeyers? So coming to you from our uh, home base here in Tennessee. Now when I say home base, you know I'm referring to for us, that's water, electric, sewer. That is a lot of water hoses, electrical cords and sewer. <laughs> May not be the most beautiful setup you've ever seen, but um, it works. Because I know that's kind of the first thing with a home base. It's like, oh, well you, then you have, you have a home in Tennessee. Well, we, well, we do have a home, <laughs> but it's still like it's our RV um, that we just set up with full hookups at our home spot that we have in Tennessee. Also, you may notice, you may not notice, um, this is actually a different camera that I'm filming on. Man, that thing is heavy. <laughs> so we've been looking into changing up camera gear. I was initially a Canon guy to start with, and then Panasonic GH5 came out that had everything it checked off my list, except for probably two things, low light performance and autofocus. Come on. Focus on it. Focus on the box. Here's the box. Come here, box. Come here, box. Oh, my goodness, the autofocus just never, <laughs> they just never got there with the autofocus stuff, which is a big deal for what we do with moving around. Um, what you guys see is the end result product. You're probably thinking, well, the autofocus seems fine, Nathan. We've, but you didn't see possibly the five shots before that that were out of focus, or me having to refilm something because it was out of focus, or me having to just constantly tap focus everything I'm doing while I'm walking. A lot of extra work went into stuff not auto-focusing, so it's pretty glorious to have something that actually auto-focuses. <laughs> so so uh, pretty pumped about that. We're shooting on the EOS R is what I've got set up right now, so we're gonna give that a go uh, because I'm pretty excited about what I think Canon has this year. I get super excited about camera talk in case you can't tell. <laughs> So Hensley's gonna take us on a tour. Some of our home based stuff, right Hensley? Yeah. But before we do, where are your old boots at? I'm gonna show the difference. She has outgrown her boots. Some of you have asked, what do you do? Are those the same pair of boots Hensley's had? Obviously not since she was like one or whatever, but she goes through a new pair of boots about every year, six months, something like that. I don't, how many pairs have we done on your boots? Three. Three, at least. She's done a bunch. So these are no longer fitting. So she's gonna have to uh, change it up. You ready to get your new ones out? Yeah. Go grab them, let's do this. Oh, look at them, they're so shiny. These are size 12 and she had uh, 11. They're gonna be a little bit firm until you break them in. Awesome. Now we're ready for the tour. All right, what we got right here? Let me show you your favorite thing to do. Hop on here. <coughs> what we got here? A tree house. A tree house? What do you think, buddy? You want the sand pit? Dis? <laughs> He's saying dis. All right, here you go. You like that sand pit? Marissa had concerns about the tree house. She probably still does. <laughs> Nathan, he, he never does anything to small scale, but <laughs> yeah, he had to go all out on this. And it's still a work in progress. We have like a lot of ideas for it, but I mean, the kids have spent so many hours out here at the tree house. So this has really been a good a good thing for them, a good investment. Yeah, I still plan on redoing the ladder. Still plan on doing like a rail at some point. Uh, I did extend the zip line because 50 feet just wasn't enough. Now it's uh, now it's 90 feet. What's cool about this, when you build your own thing instead of like a custom set that's already done, you can kind of do your own stuff. So stuff we wanted to do, we as in me, I guess. Uh, Marissa probably would not have opted for this to be eight to 10 feet in the air. But uh, you know, <laughs> most, most, most of your stuff is built five feet in the air. I went ahead and uh, jacked this up to 10. That way you can get this, uh, nobody wants like a regular slide. You want this massively long slide that comes down. And uh, it doesn't matter if it comes fast. She calls it a death trap, but you're landing in the sand. All right, girl, show me what you got. Let's see it. Go, Hensley. <laughs> I think it'll stop. Yeah, there it goes. <laughs> I think that just like shows me how big she is. Well, she's not too big because she still needs help getting off, I think. Like, what do you need? She's such a big girl. She is. What we're going to have to do 
is uh, get the video of when Nathan no. tested this out. Oh I can get that video. <laughs> we, ha good. we had a friend that was here that kind of kind of caught a glimpse of it. So pro tip, you're doing a zip line and you raise it from here to here on one end, but then you don't raise it on the other end, which it was initially like at this tree right here. As far as physics, like you're gonna go way faster. And I knew that. I just, I looked at it, I eyeballed it, said, you know, that's gonna go a little bit faster. Let me just hop on it and try it out. At least you tested it out and not like- Yeah, I at least had the- uh... <laughs> Threw Hensley on it first, but um, yeah, that could have been tragic. <laughs> you're lucky. So basically this is an acre, right, ish of land back here that technically her mom owns. Mm -hmm. um, her sister, Marissa's sister lives over here behind this shed on the other side. Marissa's mom is in this cabin right here that she just built. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Love it. What are you cooking? Egg. Hi JJ. <laughs> this tree has this? That didn't look that bad, babe. All right, trampoline. Which finding her someday helps set up. This is our, uh, our workout room. And so as far as my leg and me working out and things like that, I finally, after racing a girl and injuring my leg in Florida, thanks Jesse, uh, finally got to where I've been icing and ibuprofen and all that enough every single day <laughs> that I've gotten where I can run a little bit. Uh, but I put up this, uh, this ghetto bar here to start doing uh, tota bars and pull ups and all that kind of stuff. Did three tota bars and I injured my shoulder. So. So yeah, that's for a, that's decorative right now, but hopefully we'll use that at some point. This is the custom deck we built for, at the time, the Airstream. You can see where it hinges right here. So when we need to, this flips up and over because it gives us just a little more cushion. We need to zigzag in and come around. We get like an extra two feet right there to make that turn. There, which is uh, not staying down real well at the current moment, but is our $300 hot tub, which inflatable hot tub may sound super uh, not enjoyable, but uh. It's not been half bad, right, babe? We love the hot tub because, I mean, it's perfect for our situation where we can let Hensley use it as like a little pool in the day and she loves that. And then at night, because we don't have a bathtub, we don't have anything like that. It's just nice to kind of have that soak every now and then. And Nathan and I can escape once the kids are put down to sleep. We can come out here and have alone time. Let's see. We have put four adults in here at one time. A little bit tight. <laughs> two is the perfect number. Yeah, two is pretty good, or a few kids. It goes up to 104 degrees, which I think is pretty close to what a normal hot tub would do. And it has... Wow, JJ! Bubbles! Look at all that bubbles! It's our fire pit area right now, which we use a ton, right babe? <laughs> like, we use this thing like crazy, because we got so much wood around everywhere. We thought about building a custom fire pit, but instead we just got a solo stove um, that we keep out here all the time. We recently did a live chat on Patreon and did a Ask Us Anything, and one of the biggest questions we got was about our home base. So Valerie and Dave asked, uh, how hard is it to install full hookups, and did you install them yourself? So full hookups, of course that's water, electric, and sewer. You know, the electric, I'm gonna be honest, like, we have 600 amp hours of Battleborn lithium. We got over 2,400 watts of solar on the roof. So, I mean, we debated and we did this as far as the electric. Could we just do this without electric from the county, from the city or whatever? But, but really it came down to one question. Am I okay with not being able to use the AC through the night? I said, look Marissa, we can, we can run anything we want. We can do anything we want as long as we get halfway decent solar. I could even possibly put some extra panels out that would catch some sun beyond maybe us being under the trees a little bit and route that in, you know, to the batteries we have or whatnot. With the amount of 600 amp hours of lithium, consistently running the air conditioner through the night and basically not thinking about electric at all, 24 seven, 365 days a year, tough to do. Now we debated, whether or not you could get a generator that would automatically kick in once the batteries get to a certain level and all that. Now some of your motorhomes already have all that built in. So that's kind of a different story if that's your thing. But, but for us, we're just like at that point, and this is the big thing for us that pushed it over the edge. And I think I'm kind of getting to the questions been asked. <laughs> but when it came to water, electric, and sewer being hooked up out here, the electric was a big X factor because if they wanted to run electric, we're about 500 feet away from where the main line's at on the road. It's gonna be around five grand to run electric out here. But what happens is, and this is a tactic or something you might look for if you're looking for a spot. If you have a house or something with a permanent foundation, they do it for free, <laughs> at least here. 
and I would say a lot of places. So we did not do our own electric, we ran that from the main line. Now the water I could have done myself, it's not a huge deal to just run some lines and stuff like that. We had to still pay for the water meter from the county, I guess it was or whatnot, like 500 bucks for the meter or something like that. But I just hired it out. It was like two bucks a foot. Really, I haven't done much of it in the septic. We didn't do that ourselves. Because Donna was doing her cabin anyways, we just went through the county and um, just up to code, up to regulations. Basically what we did, everything was up to code, everything was up to par with the regulations for her cabin that she put in with the septic and the water and the electric and the whole deal. And then we just piggybacked off of that. But it was a win for Donna as well because she wanted to do this. I said, we said, look, if we could do this and we're gonna stay back here at least a couple years plus, um, we'll pay half of that. So, so that cut it in half. So it was a win for her as well. She saved thousands of dollars by us going in with her. And she gets to be around the grandkids and we get to be around the grandma. Um, pretty, pretty good win for everybody really. Cheryl was asking about, is this like up to par with regulations? Do you have restrictions, all that kind of stuff? Well, I mean, basically, since we went by all the codes and all the restrictions of Donna's cabin, and we're just piggybacking off of that. Everything's up to par, everything's up to restrictions and all that too. But, and this is a big deal, you do have to look at where you're thinking of doing a home base and find out what the regulations are as far as an RV being parked there for a long period. Even if you're coming off a house or if you have your own land or all that kind of stuff. Because ideally, I think we would have liked to maybe been closer to the city. We're about, I mean, we're not too, like 20, 25 minutes probably from like a Walmart and kind of like the center of the city from here. The city regulations are different than the county regulations we have. County regulations, you can park an RV long term, it's not a big deal. City regulations, I think it was like 14 days, which obviously would not work <laughs> for us if we want to stay more than two weeks at a time. If you're looking at doing something way off the road, especially 500 feet off the road or whatever, you might come out cheaper just buying an old rundown house or an old barn or if somebody sort of had some electric ran out, some water ran out for something and then just sort of working off of that then running all the utilities out. And so if your thought is, I'm just gonna go buy some land and build a home base, keep an open mind that you might come out just as well if you found a house that you could Airbnb or use for people coming over or do, do whatever, rent it out or whatever, and then piggyback off of that might come out even better. And so I think if you're looking into a home base, I mean, it's kind of where you start is like, what is important to me? Because if you don't, maybe when you're bouncing around, you get enough of the outdoors and you're like, I don't want more of the outdoors. <laughs> maybe, and if there are regulations as far as like, if you're building a site, but if you really want to be close to a city, because that's what's hard is to build your own place for an RV within the city. But there are like campgrounds where you can buy a pad. Mm -hmm. um, and so you could still get a pad in a city or in a sweet area. Yeah. You're just maybe stuck with a little bit of overhead as far as like buying that pad at that park. And then you can just sort of come and go as you please. And they'll leave that there sitting there for you when you come through. So that's an option mm -hmm. too. We looked at buying some land of our own and setting up a spot, but um, that might be something we do in the future. But for this point of time, we were like, wow, you know, we could definitely share space with her, share the cost. And it just, it made sense to be close to family, spend as much time as we can with them. Like, honestly, one of the perks right now is they're playing with at grandma's house, you know? Yeah, so that yeah. is definitely, and you know, we have cousins here. And so uh, that's that's definitely awesome that we make the most of our, of our time with family. There's been so many times in our travels I've ran into people and all the concerns they come up with for the RV lifestyle, I tend to always answer with, have you considered a home base? Because it seems like mm -hmm. that answers a lot of the questions. They're like, what if I miss family? What if I mm -hmm. miss friends? What if, you know, we were asked on one of our questions, would we garden or church? You know, what if I don't want to be uprooted in that? So I think a lot of my answer always comes down to, well, have you considered a home base? Because you do get the best of both worlds that way. Like we love travel, we love adventure, but then this is the best place for us to just to kind of hit that reset button and do those things we love and then get back out there and go again. So Melody sent in something that says, we discussed the idea of a home base from the beginning. Um, and after this craziness this past month, I'm even more convinced we will need one. Um, I think it's a good question slash concern in light of the COVID-19 virus and possible things in the future, like is it a necessity, a must have, or just don't RV without a home base? I mean, is that the mindset that you really, it's things are changing and that's the mindset you need to have. From what I've seen, 
there is a little more scramble, but there are places to go at this point. But I do also get that once we come back to the, our home base, that was our thinking behind it was let's just go back to the home base. Let's mm -hmm. hunker down for a while. A weight was lifted off my shoulders yeah. because there, there was no question. There we was that with. security. Yeah. Um, um, so I don't think that it's a have to because I haven't seen anybody who is completely stranded and people have been so welcoming to the RV mm -hmm. community. I've seen people posting, Hey, I've got a spot, you know, for those who need it, if they need to come and self isolate, cause you do have your own home with you. So. I think if you have that fear and maybe the have to, if you want to say that something might be a have to maybe at least know where you could go if, mm -hmm everything just starts breaking loose or whatever. If nothing else, I don't think you have to have a full blown home base with full hookups and the tree house and the whole deal <laughs> done and ready and waiting for you. But at least maybe, maybe you're talking to the brother-in-law, maybe you're talking to your parents or maybe you're talking to a family member or just a friend and say, look, if things go South, do I have a spot mm -hmm. while we figure this out and figure out what's going to go on? Could, and I'll pay you or whatever. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to just mooch off of people, but mm -hmm. like you said, could I stay here until things smooth out and I can get back to a campground or yeah. have some sort of like in any kind of an emergency situation? Yeah. So I, I think that conversation yeah. could maybe take place, but I wouldn't let it keep you from RVing because mm -hmm. you're like, I can't RV. I don't have a home base. What if everything goes wrong? Mm -hmm. Like, I think just have the other conversation if it's a concern. Oh, you got a oh, book. book. This is this quarter book? JJ loves getting his books out of the his little book hutch. <laughs> And then he brings them all over. These are the ones we've read so far. <laughs> and he'll bring a book to you and want you to read it. And he'll go back and get another book and want you to read it. He doesn't always make it through the book is the problem. <laughs> which drives me crazy. But he's one, so we'll... Hey, JJ, let's get the first page. You ready? Corduroy likes to go to the doctor. The waiting room has lots of toys and books. He likes and this a lot one. of pounds. Oh, JJ! Are you ready? Or the book? Bring Cookie over here. Yeah, all right. This one, this cookie. So one of the questions we got from Jenny was, do you think that a deck or covered area is essential? And I think that comes down to how much you see yourself outside, what your space inside is. If you have a small space, then an outdoor space to us is essential. Well, our thought on whether or not to do permanent covered storage uh, for the deck kind of plays into our mindset for a lot of the stuff we've done here. Really, really the only thing we've got that I'll consider permanent, I mean, granted we've hooked up water, electric, sewer, we got some rock and stuff, and we've got like the tree house, you know, back over here or whatever. <laughs> but this deck could be moved. The picnic tables can be moved, the chairs, the hot tub, uh, the technically the trampoline. So. That was when, when I was the debating RV. the RV. <laughs> I mean, literally, like you can look out here one day and it looks like nothing's here just about. But that's really what we wanted was to have that flexibility. And I think that helps us make decisions because we're like, well, we're not all in and we can move it anyways. And we're really not like the deck. I mean, we can do a lot of stuff with that. So mm -hmm. it's not like too much of a risk to build the deck uh, or even honestly do this whole home base. So, yeah, we got we just put the awning out if we need coverage. Um, it'd been nice to have something permanent. But the thing with the deck is movable. Mm -hmm. But if I wanted a permanent roof I would have to like take posts and put them in the ground and make a much more permanent foundation for that roof to be stable enough for the RV. We're nomads at heart like mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you never know what we're gonna do next and we like to roll with the punches and so we even though we're like hey let's have a home base so we have something a little more semi-permanent we still want everything movable because we're always ready for that next stage of life. If you're going to build a home base, this is something cool too. There is some initial investment in it, but there's not that much more investment to go ahead and put a couple extra outlets in or put a couple extra water spigots in. It's not that much more if you're going to go ahead and do one home base spot to go ahead and do two, three, four spots. It's really not. It's the initial cost of getting everything ran out there and set up to start with. Then you can start piggybacking off of that. And this ties in with our reasoning of not doing a permanent roof on this as well. Um, you know, Henry asked about, are we going to put grass in the area at any point? We could, but most likely since we're trying to really cut down on maintenance and stuff like that, we're probably just going to, and we'll do some better looking gravel at some point. This is killing Marissa here, I know. <laughs> but probably we're going to do something that's very, very low maintenance uh, here in the area. We leave for months at a time. And so to have like grass that needs to be maintained or a garden that needs to be maintained, it, it depends on how long you're into it um, and how 
maybe how likely you think you are to move around. So the most frequently asked question of all this is, yeah, 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 yeah. What does all this cost? <laughs> <laughs> so starting off, uh, we had a bulldozer come in and start clearing out the area. We really tried to clear out as little as possible. We wanted as many trees as possible. Had about 500 bucks into that. We paid 50% of that, 50-50 with Donna for the initial clearing. So in order to not be charged $10 a foot for electric to be ran from the main line, we needed to have a septic tank and a permanent foundation down. So Donna paid 100% of her firm permanent foundation, but we paid 50% of the septic tank cost. Now the septic tank cost was around three grand, but there was another 300 bucks to run all that stuff up to where our hookups are at. And so we paid 100% of everything that ran up to where our site was at. And then we paid 50% of the $3,000 on the septic tank. So I know it's a little weird that I'm kind of like giving you 50% of this and full <laughs> cost on that, but that's, that's how it worked out. <laughs> um, as far as water, it was $2 a foot to run that back here, 500 feet, so that was around 1,000 bucks, $500 for the meter. We still had a couple hundred extra bucks into spigots and getting that hooked up and that kind of stuff too. Um, and so 1,700 bucks total, but we paid, probably to pay about 60%. We paid a little more than Don on that because we needed extra stuff done on that. Now as far as electrical, if it was just us here in the back, and this is the big cost, some of you guys wondering about mm -hmm. this, it would have been $10 a foot, at least in our area, to run it 500 feet back, so five grand right off the bat to get electrical back here. But because we have the septic tank with Donna, because we have the foundation, because she's building a house back here, we were able to piggyback off of that. Um, and so I just had the, like 300 bucks into a box and into like the wire and all that stuff. And then Mike from the dry campers came out and then hooked it up for me. So that also saved. So that, that was about 300 bucks, our cost for electric, but it'd probably be, and a lot of this stuff, it depends on if you're doing it yourself or if you're hiring it out. Mm -hmm. We hired most of this stuff out. I mean, we didn't, I still had some, you know, elbow grease into like spreading gravel and stuff yeah. like that. But for the most part, we hired a lot of this stuff well, out. Well, we were on the road a lot of the yeah. time too. Yeah. So, and expecting a baby. So we did not get to do as much hands-on. We kind of oversaw it from the road. The deck, we had, there was like extra wood left over from Donna's cabin when she built it. So like... I think two thirds of that wood was from leftover wood. So we, only, we had like 500 bucks into the deck. And we did, I built that with Corey from Finding Our Someday. So there was some labor. You the know, deck's been awesome. So well worth that. <laughs> yeah, so a deck that size, you're probably looking at at least double that. A thousand, 1500 bucks, probably something like that. If you had somebody just come in, probably two grand, honestly, if somebody just came in and supplied the wood and did all the labor and everything like that. But actually one of the biggest costs <laughs> out of our pocket was like the tree house. Um, and I did all the work on that myself. It was like a thousand bucks. I don't know what Merry happened. Christmas, <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> just kept going and going. Happy Easter, thing. happy yeah, everything yeah. to Hensley and JJ on that. So yeah. <laughs> that was their, I mean, honestly, that's what we did for their Christmas gift. Yeah. Is yeah. We did a tree house. So our last question was a great question from Michelle. She's asking about, do we have regrets or would we do anything different about the way that we've done our home base? Um, I mean, yeah, I'm sure there's <laughs> something I could have done better or differently. I don't, we decided to have only one drive that came in. So that causes us to have to zigzag and park. So it takes a little longer than I'd like for us to get into our site and get out of our site every time. But then again, that keeps us sort of tucked in. So I don't know. I don't think I have like major. I don't think so either. No, I think, I think we did. I, I mean, I think it's been better than expected. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, the, the space is great. Mm -hmm. um, I've loved being able to be really close with, with family and Nathan's family's right down the road. Mm -hmm. So both our families are really close. Um, this was a great spot. That's another thing to look for when you're looking for a home base with an RV is accessibility. And this place is really great as far as like getting an RV here off the interstate. Mm, it's yeah, just an easy yeah. on, easy off. A lot of land we looked at, we really loved the location and it was beautiful, but we're like, we couldn't get an RV down this road. It would be tricky. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that was something that kind of said no to a lot of pieces of land but this one mm. was really great to to get in and off the interstate right here so it but still in nature and tucked back in the country a little bit so thank you to all our patrons for all these awesome questions and hopefully you guys got a lot of information about all these burning questions that you all have about having a home base if you're curious about other home base videos we'll link to one of those for you guys here on youtube so thank you so much until next time Catch you guys later.